Mercy and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. What's in a name? What's in a name? You've had the pleasure of naming a child anytime soon. You've probably seen a book like that. I chose this particular image because most of them had 40,000, 60,000. There's 100,000 baby names in that book. You get to choose one. How do you do that? What's in the name? How, how do we choose a singular name for a child? What does a name mean? Is it, is it just something that identifies us? Is it a label that we like slap on ourselves and say, this is who I am. I'm, I'm called this. Or is there more to a name? Especially when we get to that name. Jesus. And I mean, I can tell you about the, the, the background of the name. I mean, the name Jesus comes from the, uh, the Hebrew Yeshua, which, is the, which basically means Yahweh saves or God saves. And uh, famous people in the Bible like Joshua and Joseph and Josiah, they all have essentially that name, just different kinds of, of, of ways of putting it together. So Jesus' name literally means Yahweh saved. Say, so, what? It's a name, right? Just like your name or my name. Hi, I'm David. You know, it's a name. It's a label, right? There's more to it than that, though, right? When you look into the scriptures, when you look into the Bible, you see there seems to be more to this name than just a label. For instance, from our lesson today, when Peter and John went to the guy who was begging on the side of the road because he couldn't walk, he, he, they said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. And then he got up and started walking. Okay, something about this name. Later on, when they're challenged about this, this is what they had to say. They said, by faith in the name of Jesus, this man was made strong. All right, so by faith in the name of the name of Jesus. There's something about this name that's different. It allows for these miracles to take place. One of my favorite moments in the Bible is in Philippians where it says this. At the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. This is, this is talking about at the end when Jesus comes again. At the name of Jesus... Every knee will bow. It's not just a label that's slapped on Jesus. Oh, I heard the name. I'm down on my knees. There is something about this that's bigger than just a label. How about this one? This was from John. And this is his command, God's command, to believe in the name of his son Jesus. Now, I, I usually think about believing in Jesus, right? You believe in Jesus. But it says here to believe in the name of Jesus. What is that? Is the name of Jesus different than Jesus? Is it the same as Jesus? What's with this whole name thing? Well, that's the big question. What is in a name? Now, I know what Jesus has done, right? We know what he has done. He's come into this world. He is God himself who has taken on flesh, who has lived in this world with us, who, who loved us enough to take all of our sins upon himself, to die upon a cross, rise three days later back to life to show us that not only by faith in him do we have the forgiveness of our sins, but we know we have a life eternal with him. All right? I know all of that stuff, but what does his name have to do with the rest of this? What's in this name? What's in a name? Well, in order to kind of get at this, I want to talk a little bit about our Old Testament lesson. Go all the way back. This is Moses being called by Yahweh out of a burning bush to go back to Egypt to tell the Pharaoh to let my people go. And Moses, of course, is saying, I'm not qualified to do that. You can find someone better. Thank you very much. And God said, no, 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 no. You're the man. You're the man. He's like, all right, so fine. Well, what am I supposed to tell them? When they ask me who has sent me, and when they ask me what is his name, what am I supposed to tell them? And God then says, I am who I am. Which, if 
you really kind of think of this coming out of a burning bush, it's kind of an intimidating thing to say, I am who I am. I am has sent me to you. I am is the one who he comes. He comes in the name of the Almighty God. He is representing the Almighty God, the one who has claimed them to be his people. And so this is, this is a pretty awesome thing, this name of God. And when we talk about Yahweh, or whenever you see the word Lord in all caps in the Old Testament, it's based off of this right here. I am who I am. So Yahweh essentially means I am. All right. Well, sure enough, God does this for the people. And, and Moses uh, goes in the name of Yahweh and, and uh, frees the people. They cross the Red Sea. And they have, they have this freedom. They've gone up the mountain. Moses has gone up the mountain. And God gives them the Ten Commandments. All right, and most of us have studied in one way or another ten, the Ten Commandments. The first one is the most important. You shall have no other gods. And Luther's explanation is beautiful, that we should fear, love, and trust in God above all things. And all the other commandments are essentially there as explanation for the first commandment. And so God is going to get into the rest of these nine commandments. And he's making sure that Moses knows, don't deal with this idol stuff. That doesn't work. There are no other gods other than me. He's got all these other commandments to get to. You know, the ones about murder and adultery and stealing and coveting and lying. All of those things. But what do you suppose is the second one? Right on the heels of the first commandment, we get this. You shall not misuse the name of Yahweh your God. Whoa. So before he talks about all those other things that I mentioned, he says, don't misuse my name. And again, I kind of look at that and I say, really? Isn't it just a word? Isn't it just a, a label that we slap on God and say, that one's Yahweh? What, what's the big deal about misusing the name of God? And here's, here's the best way that I can explain it for you, okay? Okay. Let's just say you had the opportunity to speak in the name of someone, and your job was to speak in the name of the President of the United States. Let's just say you're an ambassador, okay? And you're an ambassador, you're stationed in a country. Let's pick a country. Um, how about a country we're not uh, too sure we know about these days? How about Pakistan? All right, you're in Pakistan. You are the ambassador of the United States to the country of Pakistan, to the leaders of Pakistan. You speak in the name of our president, Barack Obama, to the people of Pakistan, to the leaders of Pakistan. When, when you speak, they're assuming that you are speaking in the name of our president, that you communicate the will of our president, the purpose of our president, the values of the United States of America. So if our president, Barack Obama, wants to communicate with the people of Pakistan, or to the leaders of Pakistan, he calls up the, the ambassador and says, here's what I want you to tell them. And the ambassador then turns around and says, here's what we, I, you know, here, here is the message in the name of Barack Obama, our president of the United States. And they say, okay, well, that must come from Barack Obama, the president of the United States. And it's a, it's a nice system. It works really well. But let's just say, let's just say you get a burr under your saddle with our president. And you think, you know what, he's making some poor choices. I'm gonna take things in my own hands. I am going to speak to the leaders of Pakistan, but I am going to speak my own ideas in the name of Barack Obama. So then you go and tell them something. I mean, it could be anything. We're, we have warships on the way. We have, we're building up uh, our, our forces on your border. We are going to, and. We're going to enforce sanctions upon you. We're going to, to, to take down our trade with you or some way or another, okay? And you say this all in the name of Barack Obama. <coughs> now they're going to believe you that this has come to them in the name of Barack Obama, okay? Back home in the Oval Office, the president's got a problem because he's got an ambassador out there who's speaking in his name but not truly representing the things that he, he is, uh, he's told them, 
the will of the United States, the values of the United States. He's got a problem because somebody is speaking in his name by not actually telling the truth. How important is it for our ambassadors to speak in the name of our president? Well, brothers and sisters in Christ, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 20. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. Every one of us, as baptized believers, are ambassadors of God. We speak in his name to the world around us. The things that we do, the things that we say, are in the name of of God himself. We represent him and his will. We re represent his nature to people. We represent the reality of the cross and the resurrection to people. We are the ambassadors of God who speak in his name. And Jesus warned us. He said there are going to be plenty of people out there who don't want to do this. For instance, Matthew 24, Jesus answered, Watch out that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, claiming I am the Christ, and will deceive many. Many will come in my name. Many are going to come say, in the name of Jesus, but then really give their own opinion. Or, in the name of Jesus, I'm going to try to get my way. Alright? And there will be many who are going to be deceived, thinking that they're hearing the truth from Jesus. But in fact, they're getting their own way. There's actually a story about this. We're going to be reading it pretty soon in Acts, but I couldn't wait. I had to get it in here. This is from Acts chapter 19. Paul is in Ephesus. And, and here's the story. The print is a little small. I'll read it for you. Some Jews who went around driving out evil spirits tried to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus over those who were demon-possessed. They would say, in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, I command you to come out. Seven sons of Siva... A Jewish chief priest were doing this. One day, the evil spirit answered them. Imagine that. Jesus I know, and I know about Paul, but who are you? Then the man who had the evil spirit jumped on them and overpowered them all. He gave them such a beating that they ran out of the house naked and bleeding. When this became known to the Jews and Greeks living in Ephesus, they were all seized with fear, and the name of the Lord Jesus was held in high honor. So here we have an example from the Bible of guys who are trying to kind of play around with the name of God. And so they find these people who are demon-possessed, demon they're like, well, I saw the disciples do it. All they did was speak in the name of Jesus, and they came out. All right, so in the name of Jesus, who Paul preaches about, come out. And the demon is like, Huh? You know, I respect Jesus. I know who he is. You know, if, if you're really speaking in the name of Jesus, I'm afraid. Paul, I know Paul, because Paul speaks in the name of Jesus. You're no Jesus. You're no Paul. Who are you? Because you're really not speaking in the name of Jesus. You're just speaking in your name. And I don't really respect that name. So let me tackle you and take you over. Which is what he did, okay? Because he didn't, he wasn't afraid of them because they really weren't speaking in the name of Jesus. They were just saying the words. It wasn't real. Now the demon would have respected Jesus. The demon would have respected Paul. The demon would have respected us. We're really speaking in the name of Jesus. And as a result of this, yes, the name of Jesus, high respect. Because they just saw the demon react and say, yeah, I, uh, I know who Jesus is. Wow. This name of Jesus is actually a whole lot bigger and more powerful than I think we would have ever, ever imagined. This is from 1 Corinthians 1. The people uh, in, in Corinth had, had kind of messed it up. They were thinking that, that the whole Paul thing was the important thing. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptized into the name of Paul? <laughs> what a ridiculous concept, right? Were you baptized in the name of Paul? Well, no, we were baptized in the name of Paul. But I think it's easy for us to get into a mode where are we actually living out a life in the name of Jesus? Or are we living out a life in the name of ourselves? In the name of someone else? In the name of, I don't know, it could be anyone. Anyone we follow, anyone we listen to, anyone we're influenced by. Um, are we living our baptized lives 
truly in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And that's why you might notice when we have our worship services. At the very beginning, right after we sing our opening hymn, I do this thing. I come up here and I say, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Right? I do this big cross. Why? Well, because this time that we have, this space, this, this moment is all about the purpose and will of God himself. I don't want us to be worshiping ourselves. I don't want you to worship me. God forbid. We're, we're here to worship the one and only almighty God who saved us. And so we do this in the name of God himself. When you, when you receive the forgiveness of sins, right? Same thing. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Not by my name, not by your name, but by the name of God himself. You have received the forgiveness of your sins. Brooke today, when, when baptized, when brought into the kingdom of God, was not baptized into the name of Bethel Lutheran Church. Or David Seabaugh. But in the name of, the, of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In a couple of weeks, we're going to have confirmation students up here. And guess what? They're going to say the very same thing. This is my faith. I believe this. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I live my life for Him. I live in His holy name. And you see, it goes beyond just what happens on an hour on Sunday. Because as baptized people, and as you, as you heard Lisa talk about earlier today, we are the ones who are out there. So the name of God follows you. And it's who you are. It's how you communicate. The things that you do, the things that you say, you represent the Almighty God. In some ways, I feel like every morning we should just start and say, you know what? In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, here we go again. <laughs> Another day. Let's do this, God. I'm just going to live this day for you. I'm going to live it in your name. I have no clue what's coming. Just guide me. Just lead me. We also pray in the name of Jesus. Have you noticed this? At the end of our prayers, often we'll say, in the name of Jesus we pray, amen. Right? And it's sort of a tag on at the end of our prayers to kind of give it legitimacy. But boy, that's ringing a little differently now, isn't it? We're actually praying in the name of the Almighty God, Jesus himself. And we've done something on the on the uh, on nine communion Sundays. Uh, we've we've taken the Lord's prayer and we've kind of expanded it into a larger form. Hallowed be thy name. How many of you growing up had any clue what that meant? It took me a long time before I even knew what a hallowed was. What's that? Okay. But what we've done with this is we've kind of said, all right, let's rephrase this. Let's put this into different words. May your mission be the greatest truth. To be holy is to be set apart. To speak in the name of God is to speak according to his mission. So may the mission of God be the greatest and most exclusive, awesome truth in this world. May your mission be the greatest truth for me. May the, your mission be the greatest truth among the church or in, even around the world. When we say, holy is your name, that's huge. That's huge. So we get back to Acts. So here Peter and John come across this guy who begs because he doesn't have strength in his legs. They heal him in the name of Jesus. And everybody comes to them and saying, you know, this was a miracle. This is weird. You know, you are doing this in your own name. This is your own thing. What kind of magical powers do you have? And here is his response. Look at it again. When Peter saw this, he said to them, men of Israel, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us as if by our own power or godliness we had made this man walk? By faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has given this complete healing to him, as you can all see. The name of Jesus is powerful because it represents the Almighty God. So, what's in a name? What's in a name? And it's not something I'm going to talk about a whole lot more today because I think a lot of it now has to do with you. What's the name of Jesus to you? What does it mean for you to live in the name of Jesus? It's going to look a little different for each of us. 
And I just pray that, that it will be something that you think about, that you pray about, and that you live out in your lives. In Jesus' name, amen.